Tropical Storm Helene has officially formed in the northwestern Caribbean Sea and is expected to become a major hurricane over the next 48 hours as it eventually moves into the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, we are seeing a lot of convection across the northwestern Caribbean, and it's also a very large storm. You'll notice right off the bat, this is already becoming a pretty large storm, even though its intensity is not that high right now. This is going to be one of the biggest concerns for Florida over the next couple of days because this is going to be literally a massive storm as it approaches Florida bringing the potential for widespread storm surge up and down the west coast of Florida. And in addition to that, we can expect tropical storm force winds across nearly the entire state eventually as we go into Thursday. National Hurricane Center has gone ahead and issued plenty of watches and warnings, including the state of Florida, where we do have now hurricane watches in effect all the way from approximately Fort Myers, Florida, all the way back up into Apalachicola. There are also tropical storm watches in effect for southwest Florida and also a couple of areas back over near Panama City where there will be the potential for tropical storm conditions. Now, these are not officially warnings, but you should make sure that you are getting your plan ready to go if you're in these areas, and if you are under any evacuation orders, take those seriously because the storm surge is going to be massive across the coastline with the potential for up to 15 feet of storm surge, which will be very well life-threatening. Back over closer to where this is right now, Tropical Storm Helene's right back over here in the northwestern Caribbean Sea. We do have tropical storm warnings in effect for both the UK Yucatan Peninsula and as well as Cuba, it is possible that this will make landfall over the Yucatan Peninsula sometime this evening, which may delay development just slightly, but it's still expected to become a major hurricane. Now let's go into the latest forecast and give you an idea of what we are expecting in the state of Florida and really all across the southeast once this becomes Hurricane Helene. We will begin with the National Hurricane Center forecast and their latest advisory. This still is a low-end tropical storm, and you might be thinking, well, that's not very impressive. This isn't going to get to major hurricanes status? Well, that's not necessarily true because the environment in the Gulf of Mexico is extremely favorable for rapid intensification, which means that this could go from a low-end tropical storm to a major hurricane within 24 to 36 hours. That is the possibilities and the capabilities of this system because we have a loop current that is currently in place across the southern Gulf of Mexico. That's going to be able to help steer this thing up, get it a lot more intense as we go into Wednesday afternoon and eventually into Thursday morning. So the current forecast is that we think this will be a hurricane by Wednesday morning. During the day Wednesday, we aren't expecting any rapid intensification, but we think by Wednesday afternoon and evening, that is when that process will begin, leading to a major hurricane by Thursday morning, and eventually by Thursday evening, this will be making landfall in the state of Florida, somewhere between about Panama City, Florida, back closer to Tampa, as a major hurricane, meaning Category 3 plus hurricane is currently in the forecast, and then after that, it'll still be a tropical storm all the way up through Atlanta, where there will be some scattered power out even as far north as Georgia and as well as South Carolina, and this will weaken into a depression as we go into Saturday. When I talk about favorable ingredients for rapid intensification, what I'm talking about is that there is a lot, basically an abundance of deep, warm water across the Gulf of Mexico, especially in this red and white area that's outlined here in the southern Gulf. That is exactly where Helene is going to be moving through. In addition to that, we have very impressive uh, ocean currents that are available here. That's going to basically create this loop current effect that will be able to help intensify this as it eventually moves towards the Big Bend of Florida. Now, the good news is that once this gets closer to Florida, it's not nearly as favorable for rapid intensification. The bad news is that the rapid intensification that's currently forecasted will more than likely happen well before this makes landfall. So we aren't really expecting this to be a last-second major intensification. We are probably going to see this at its peak intensity sometime Thursday morning, and it will probably stay that way all the way until landfall. Now, let's go through the possible scenarios and the impacts that are expected to Florida, beginning with our latest hurricane model run for this particular hurricane. This is the HAFSA model run, which essentially, again, is a hurricane model. These are built specifically for hurricanes, so these are really reliable when it comes to hurricane intensity and as well as track. This is what it looks like by tonight. This will start to intensify further into a stronger tropical storm. This particular model does have it kind of flirting with the Yucatan Peninsula just a little bit, but eventually starts to rapidly intensify as early as Wednesday morning and eventually by Wednesday night, this becomes a much stronger hurricane down up into about a Category 2, almost to a Category 3 hurricane by as early as Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Eventually by Thursday morning, this is going to be southwest of Tampa by quite a bit. We'll start to see tropical storm impacts along the coastline of Florida as early as late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This begins to intensify even further into a Category 3 hurricane. Wouldn't rule out a low-end Category 4 hurricane at this point. It is a possibility. It's going to depend on how much this 
rapidly intensifies as we go into Wednesday night and Thursday morning. But nonetheless, you should be prepared for at least a major hurricane. As we go into Thursday around lunchtime, it's probably going to be near its peak intensity. If not, it will be at its peak intensity. And by the time it gets closer to landfall, we are expecting it to be pretty stagnant when it comes to intensity. So intensification not really expected after about, I would say, sometime around 2 o'clock on Thursday. Once it makes landfall, that's when the worst of the impacts will be felt, especially to areas in the Big Bend of Florida and also near Tampa Bay. But keep in mind, storm surge will have the potential to begin as early as Thursday morning, especially for those in the Florida Keys. It could actually begin Wednesday night. And then once it makes landfall, this will continue to move inland. By Friday morning, it'll be a tropical storm back over in Georgia and South Carolina, and it'll eventually weaken as we go into late Friday night into Saturday, where more power outages will be a possibility in both Georgia, South Carolina, and as well as North Carolina. And overall, most computer models still have this making landfall somewhere between Panama City, which I think is a lower chance of making landfall over there, with a much higher chance of making landfall somewhere in the Big Bend of Florida. Not nearly as many models have brought this towards Tampa as of lately, but we've continued to see a gradual shift to the east with these tracks, so we have to keep this, you know, in mind. It very easily could be a little bit further east than forecasted as this continues to organize. You need to make sure that you are prepared, though, if you're anywhere in that cone of uncertainty for potential direct impacts, meaning landfall could happen in your area if you are in that cone of uncertainty near the coastline. Now let's dive into the future radar, go over the potential for high wind gusts, storm surge, all basically of the threats that'll be impacting Florida. Beginning with the future radar, as we go again into tomorrow, we are expecting more intensification. Once it gets closer to Florida by Thursday afternoon, we'll start to see some of these outer bands reach Florida. We'll have a potential for a few tornadoes that'll be primarily from central Florida and back up into parts of southeast Georgia. And then heavy rainfall, including the potential for very heavy rainfall, will start to arrive to the Big Bend of Florida by around about 4 or 5 o'clock on Thursday. That's when conditions are going to deteriorate very quickly back over in those areas. And then eventually, as we go into Thursday night, this moves inland. Still some remaining rain shower activity Friday morning in Florida, but we really start to dry out as we go into Friday afternoon. Now, in terms of wind gusts and how high they could get, we are going to be talking about the potential for widespread wind gusts across the state of Florida in the category of tropical storm force. That's going to be mostly from Panama City, Florida, back through central and southeast Florida, where tropical storm force winds will be possible, just purely due to the fact that this is going to be a massive storm. This is going to be larger than what we had with Adalia when it comes to size. That means the tropical storm force wind field will also be much larger. Hurricane force wind speeds will be a possibility back over near Tampa, even though landfall is currently not expected there. That'll also increase the storm surge potential in the Tampa Bay area. Tropical storm force winds really start to pick up Thursday night, and even by around 11 o'clock Thursday is probably when we'll be near the peak of wind speeds across the state of Florida, with wind gusts exceeding 70 to 80 miles per hour in the Big Bend, and even areas like Daytona Beach, Orlando, and as well as Palm Bay will be between 50 to 60 miles per hour. That'll be able to cause some power outages, so make sure that you have flashlights ready to go. If you have a generator, have that ready to go. If you have any sort of, you know, devices that you can charge up for light sources, like an iPad that you might have in your drawer, highly recommend you also charge that up in case you do lose power for a day or two, or perhaps even longer than that, especially back over in the Big Bend. Now, as we go further inland, those wind gusts are going to continue to move up into Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, and even up into Tennessee, Kentucky, and even Virginia. As we go into Friday morning, we will have wind gusts strong enough to produce some isolated power outages, so make sure that you also have flashlights ready to go if you're in those areas. Power outages shouldn't last as long in those areas, but it will be a possibility on Friday. In terms of total rainfall accumulation, the worst of the rain will be back over in the Big Bend and also near Apalachicola, where there will be a potential for upwards of four to eight inches of rain. Could see some localized areas, depending on the magnitude of the storm, being upwards of a foot of rain. And then back over in most of the central and southern Florida, it's going to be a widespread one to three inches of rain, with some localized spots closer to five inches of rain. Now, the most life-threatening impact out of any hurricane is usually storm surge, and that is not in any exclusion to this hurricane. We are going to be talking about the potential for historic storm surge in Florida, especially in the Big Bend, where the current forecasted peak storm surge Thursday is 10 to 15 feet. So that is a big deal. Make sure if you are anywhere in those evacuation zones that you are taking this very seriously. That will be very high, you know, when it comes to water coming offshore. Cedar Key especially will be really impacted by this. Back over near Indian Pass, we're going to be talking about up to 10 feet of storm surge. And even near Tampa Bay, that is going to be an area that is going to probably get hammered by storm surge. And if we have any more easterly track to this, we could see this number really go up. So five to eight feet of storm surge is the current forecast in Tampa Bay, three to five feet back over near Charlotte Harbor, and then back in the Florida Keys, a much more modest one to three feet of storm surge. Nonetheless, if you are anywhere near the coastline or
or anywhere in one of those storm surge prone areas, make sure that you are taking evacuation order seriously. But that's it for this hurricane as of right now. We'll have another live update probably tonight on the YouTube channel, so make sure that you are subscribed down below and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates.